Welcome, I'm Paul Hahn, coordinator of Mission in North America, and I invite you to come along with me as we take a fresh look at what m a is doing to be a catalyst for the progress of the gospel across the United States and Canada. m a exists for gospel flourishing through church planting, church renewal, and missional engagement all across North America. We want to click down today to that bottom right-hand corner of our continent, to two spots in Florida, one in Central Florida, one in South Florida, where the gospel is flourishing in fresh and beautiful ways. In Central Florida, Renew Pope was formed out of the birth of Trinity Presbyterian Church in 1997, planted out of Covenant Presbyterian Church. In the 20 years or more since Trinity has been planted, 10 other churches have been birthed with an 11th on the way. Renew Polk is a beautiful collective movement of church planning in a small part of Central Florida. Come and hear the story. Down in South Florida, we'll hear First Presbyterian Church of Coral Springs getting a fresh sense of how to engage their changing community as immigrants and new people groups were coming in. ESL and other ministries have been huge for the movement of the gospel in that community and for FBC Coral Springs to become a more diverse, richer expression of the gospel herself. Let's listen along, let's watch as we see the unfolding of these stories of the gospel and how m a is part of encouraging and assisting in these beautiful gospel movements. I think the most effective way we can be a blessing to our city is by getting Jesus to people and getting people to Jesus. Because what is their greatest need ultimately? I mean, they can have, like you know, Jesus observed, what do you profit if you gain everything but lose your soul? They can have great houses and great education and great economies, but what does it profit if they have those good blessings but they, they lose their souls? So the lostness of our geography has really been a, a very compelling uh, burden we have thought about it, wept about it, prayed about it constantly, that the larger driving force is people need the Lord. And then church planting is just a means to effectively make that happen. The calls in the New Testament for evangelism are calls to plant churches. So Matthew 28, for example, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey all that I've commanded. So, I mean, it really is a, a evangelizing of people and then forming a church through baptism of bringing those people together in a church. We thought, what if we created a network of churches in our city that were in fact one church, uh, that all were working together towards the same goals. We really believe that our city is better served by five churches of 200 doing contextualized ministry in different parts of the city than one central church of a thousand. Five preachers of different personality and skill. You can care for people better in the smaller um, context. You can do pastoral care and, and shepherding is much easier and you can just do it more thoroughly. Typically what we do is we'll have an apprentice be in a mother church for usually around two years. And so my job right now is to meet people. I'm gonna build a core team that's eventually gonna go with me to plant in a new area of the city. So I'm meeting people in the church that are eventually gonna be part of that. I'm getting an opportunity to preach and learn to preach. Uh, getting an opportunity to learn the area of the city where I'm gonna plant in, the demographics, uh, all the aspects of the city that are relevant for planting there. m and was fantastic, particularly the assessment. I mean, my wife and I went to the assessment unsure if we wanted to pursue church planting. We knew there were aspects of it that we were attracted to, but we really weren't sure. But then to hear the outside affirmation of people saying, yeah, we really think your gifting fits this, um, was just a great help for us. There can be a natural pressure for a pastor's wife to fill a particular role or to, to look a particular way. And I think what Paracaleo has been very helpful for my wife in doing is uh, removing some of those assumptions and allowing her to explore how she gifted. What's her role going to be as a pastor's wife in ministry? How is God wanting to use her and her unique and particular gifts? So m has been a huge help to us in the church planting that we're trying to do here in Polk County, Florida. 
There are so many great networks and network leaders and leaders in our denomination who are thinking so strategically, so uniquely, so creatively about church planting. To be able to be connected to them through the work of m and has helped us refine the vision that we have for church planting here in Polk County. Coral Springs is a city about 40 miles north of Miami, and in around 2009 we started seeing an influx of Spanish-speaking uh, people coming into our city, and we began to consider a ministry uh, to the Spanish-speaking community. We began our ESL ministry by just posting signs on our fence and on our property, inviting people to come to an ESL program. And that first week, we saw over 150 people. In the first year, we reached 300 people. Well, it's been going on now for 10 years, and we've reached an average of 300 a year. And over that 10 years, over 1,000 people have come through our ministry program. This chart, chart, remember, it's not, it's not char, it's chart. chart. From the very beginning of the start of the ESL ministry here at FPC, I was uh, really challenged uh, by uh, this great number of people, over a hundred people every week, uh, to minister to them, uh, and uh, started to, to think how we can minister to them. We help them with English language, but you know, we want them to know Christ. And I remember uh, we uh, began a Bible study and we invited them to come out. First we did it on Wednesdays, and then Sunday mornings so they can come before the service. And from there, uh, as we established a, a core group, uh, we began to meet for worship uh, on Sunday mornings. It's a blessing to who we reach. Uh, it's a blessing to them for just day-to-day -day living, but also obviously there's eternal issues at stake and we get to share the gospel with them. But in that process of doing what the Lord calls us to do, to, to make disciples of all nations, uh, we're blessed as well. And I'm grateful for that. m and LAMP program, um, it was a blessing in my life because the, the greatest value of LAMP is that you can learn uh, Christ-centered uh, doctrine, uh, but at the same time you can serve your church. I don't believe that I will be able to do this without the training that I received from LAMP. Uh, it set me up for success uh, to work in God's kingdom. My teacher is Ms. Diaz. Um, she's a woman who, ha who has a very nice heart to, to teach. In the beginning of the class, she always gave us um, a part of the Bible. Most of the time, it is from the book of John. I learned that I'm loved. I'm loved by Jesus, and I love by God. The love of God is something new to me, new to me. And it's very, uh, very special. Now, for example, I don't feel um, alone anymore. And I, feel, and I feel loved by God. We pray that the Lord will continue to bless these movements of the gospel richly and m and partnership in them, where people are moving from feeling alone and without hope in the world to knowing God and being known by Him and knowing His love and the hope that comes from the gospel. We'd like to come to your corner of the continent, to come to your church, to your regional network, to your presbytery, and help you think through how you want to engage in fresh ways in church planning, in church renewal, in missional engagement, all for the glory of Jesus and the progress of his kingdom. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May Christ's peace be with you. Amen.